Today we are playing a 2v2 match on the beautiful and famous map Anorian. It's a Rohan and Isengard combination on the patch 2.22. We will be building two farms and recruit Mary at the beginning of the game. And also pick up the draft from the spellbook always. Hey, why is my camera so slow? Hold on a second. I need to increase the scroll speed. It's still so slow. What is going on now? I need to fix it. Give me a second, please, guys. All right. Sorry for the technical difficulties at the beginning. <laughs> sorry for that. And Rohan and Isengard is a very solid combination. So it's going to be tough for the opening team to deal with the power of Rohan and Isengard. Um, we have a good faction at the top side and an evil faction at the bottom side. So early on, what we need to do is focus down. Oh, that's an Isengard player. Okay. Early on, we need to try to deal as much economical damage to the Isengard player as potentially possible. While also protecting our settlements and also dealing uh, with the enemy units trying to take down our allies' mills. So, Rohan early on is a very solid and strong faction because you have the chance to recruit a swordsman, in this case the peasants, from structures where you can also get money from. So, it's a very, very strong early game faction. And yeah, we can also recruit more peasants, but I personally like to get the stable on the field a bit sooner. So for that reason, we won't recruit any more peasants eventually. Our ally is going to lose the meal, but it's fine. We will be definitely also able to deal great amount of economical damage to the open end player. Okay, this mid is going to be definitely taken down. There is no way the Hobbit can protect this. And it's a mirror match, ladies and gentlemen. So it's a Rohan Isengard mirror match. I like that. Over there. We're under attack. Hurry up. You shall be surprised. Use whatever weapon Okay. Um I believe the opening team didn't use the war chant just yet. So with that being said, uh, if they use it now offensively, it's going to be kind of difficult for us to defend. I'm going, I'm actually going for a sneak attack. We can't capture the settlement because the hobbit was able to get cloaked and he's still around. That's why we are not able to buy the farm. But maybe we can take down the tower and this way our peasants are going to hit level 2. And also need to try to protect our ally. Very important. We cannot fight this though. Because they are war chanted. War chant means 50% more damage. And 50% more armor for the enemy unit. We can also take down the furnace. Now it's massive by the way. Because the peasant is level 2. And they are hitting like a truck. Furnace is only level 1. It's not tanky enough. And with that we can also take it down in no time. We might be forced to make even a bit more peasants though. But let's try to defend with what we got. I mean, it's a great situation for us because not only we were able to take down a tower and a furnace, but also we are forcing him to invest so much money into the towers. And Isengard is a faction that needs a lot of cash early on. So if you don't get enough money early on, you will fall behind big time and then it's really hard to come back, you know? Hit and run. Get away! I think we can beat them! Get away! Okay, we need to micro with the Hobbit. We cannot fight this when we stand still. So hit and run. Very important. We also need to bring the reinforcements. The farm is going to be definitely taken down. Okay, so let's cloak with the Hobbit. This way the farm can be purchased. Can he cloak? No, look, look. <laughs> we actually were able to, you know, take down Meriadoc Brandybuck. That's massive. But also we need to take care of this area. We have no money for the Rohirrim yet because we were kind of losing one of the settlements early on, which is not the best thing in the world. And, you know, the farm, they are double effective for the Rohan faction because not only you will get money from them, obviously, but also they will give you the food bonus, which is, is a like a discount for the cavalry units. In this case, the Rohirrim. You know, the more farms you have, the cheaper your Rohirrim are going to get. Okay, so we can... Capture this one. We have a level 3 peasant now. That's dope. We can, you know what we can do? We can use those peasants and creep the war player offensively. With the war chan of our ally. That's going to be the plan. So, the stable from the opening player, uh, Rohan player, is super delete. Because he was giving one of his settlements to his ally. Which is not bad because Isengard needs a lot of money, but then you will fall behind. I'm asking for Warchant. Looks like he wants the group with the Uruk coming from the top side. They are also level 2. We need to now defend this area. Oh my goodness. 
Okay, we can creep this definitely with the heal from the spellbook and also with the war chant now. They are dealing a bit more damage. I mean, not a bit, a lot more damage. 50% more damage, 50% more armor means actually quite a lot in battle for middle of one. And you can see the wargs are dying like in no time. They have no chance. We can creep this easily. But unfortunately, we will be losing both of the farms early on. That's, that's gonna hurt. Why? Because this way, they will be super delayed level 3. Level 3 means you will get, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, a tanky. Oh, we also lost one part of the treasure. That's, that's not good, man. Come on now. You thief. Why are you stealing my money? Don't do that. Okay. Now we can also take down the enemy mill and creep this one, the war player, in front of our castle. And early on, I want to, I want to focus on the creeping a little bit because power point advantage in battle for middle of one is massive. So if we get the chance to unlock the Alvin boot first, we will get a huge advantage. And for that reason, creeping, creeping, creeping is the best thing. And also, of course, you also get levels, you know? Look at that. Look how much pressure, pressure our peasants were able to create at the opposite side of the map. So the Rohan Isengard team from the opening team were actually kind of forced to use the Warchan defensively. And this is gonna buy us some time. And also buy, you know, time for our ally, obviously. Okay, let's creep this. Nice. Now, we can also creep the trolley at the bottom side. By using one of the Rohirrim as a beat. And the other one is the is the one who will just focus down the lair. Let's use heal just to have a bit more healthier unit. And the mill has been still taken on. It's dope. Gather your weapons. Gather your weapons. Press <laughs> on. Okay, that was that was not planned actually. I wanted him to follow the first battalion, but it's okay. Now we need to wait until the day is finished. Now we will get a bit more money. And we are actually cash floating big time. I would love to recruit some Rohirrim archers as a counter unit to the enemy cavalry units, in this case the Rohirrim. And also eventually we might go for Elma. So Elma and Rohirrim archers. You know, the earlier you go for Elma, the better it is. Because if, if he ever gets level 4, he will just give a lot of additional damage leadership to the nearby Rohirrim and Rohirrim archers. And that's more like a carry function of the Rohan faction. Um, you can also go for a sportive variation of the build. And that would be, for example, rushing Theodine and then saving up for Aragorn just to support your ally, the Isengard player, with as much additional damage and armor leadership as potentially possible, right? But we don't want to be the supporter. We want to be the carry in this game. And for that reason, Rohir Marches and Elme are a great investment into the mid to late game. And Elma can just use Spear Throw all the time and get more and more experience. That is the plan. Okay, boom. Level 1. I mean, obviously, you need to kill a bit amount of Rohirrim. You can't get level 2 that fast. And level 3 unlocks the Outlaw leadership on the patch 2.22. Hopefully, our ally is going to give us the War Chant so we can trample down those Uruks. Please, come on now. Here, man. Is he War Chanting yet? Now, final. Now we can trample. Because when you trample the Uruks, if your horses are not buffed or they have no heavy armor, you will also take a lot of revenge damage in return. Oh, look at that. Let's pick up the Elven Wood and let's trample one more time. Great. Level 4 Rohirrim, ladies and gentlemen. That's dope. Okay, so... Oh, he was using Palantir on the, on the Rohan horses. Now they will be outrunning our Roh Rohirrim. And we need to micro. You know, run, stop, run, stop. And wait for the reinforcements to come. He might be forced to use the Elvin Wood here if he uses the War Chant. Yeah, we need to use it. Elvin Wood, besides giving you 35% increased armor, also nullifies enemy leadership bonuses on top. So while we are fighting on the Elvin Wood, the enemy won't have any leadership. No armor leadership, no damage leadership, nothing like that. And obviously we are creeping quite... A hey, wait a second. That's not allowed. That's our creep. Hopefully we will be able to take it down. This Rohirrim need to be careful. Go back home, please. Oh no, man. Come on now. It's unlucky. Oof. Oh, the Rohirrim Arches. Um, you know, Rohirrim Arches, they are not the best units in the in the game when it comes to fight. Hold on a second. Please, troll. Okay, nice. You were lucky. Imagine, you know, that's such a random situation because the troll might as well just turn on our Rohirrim Arches and one-shot the battalion. Just like that. But, you know, luckily that didn't happen. Um, Spear throw. We almost present his theory in there. <laughs> Would be awesome, you know? But it's okay. 
Okay, now we need more Rohirrim Arches and also Aramori. Let's use heal. Our Elma is taking too much damage. Wait for the Rohirrim Arches to come. Now he has to build, otherwise he will be losing this Rohirrim Battalion. Oh, that was really close. Okay, we can chase and use Spear Throw one more time. Our Elma is level 2 now. Level 3 unlocks the Outlaw leadership, which means money, money, money every time we get enemy units. And level 4 is the massive power spike of the Horse Lord of Rohan. Because that's going to give him the chance to uh, give 60% more damage to the nearby allied cavalry units and 50% more combat experience. And the reason why I'm not recruiting Tyrion just yet, if you are wondering, is because Tyrion is a hero that gives you leadership already when he's coming out. So there, there is no read of uh, no need, sorry, of rushing Tyrion, you know? That's why getting Elma first on the field and then Tyrion second is most of the time a better choice. And look how Rohirrim Arches now, they can snipe down the spikes all the time. They have no chance. Hit and run, hit and run, hit and run. And by Armory at the same time, our ally was untouched for the for the past minutes because we were keeping the Isengard and also the Rohan quite busy. And let's hope that this Isengard from the opening team has no Saruman or not a big army which can face this army from our ally. So two combos, one pikeman. But we have also, of course, leadership for him. Which is pretty nice. This, El this oh Elma, please run, Elma! Oh, we got crippled down, but it's fine. I don't, I don't think he can ever reach out to us, you know. Okay. All right. So looks like this Isengard is nothing. Like without Isengard combos, this Rohan cannot fight us. But it's Lord's doing. Lords, why are you suiciding? I want, I want to spear throw him. Kill him. Nice. We killed him, boys. That's very good. Very nice. I like that. Okay. So now we can keep up the pressure. We know that Lourdes is gone, right? That means we have nothing to fear. Nothing to be worried about. We can now also play a bit more risky with the heroes. Oh my goodness. I'm planning to go for a trample there, guys. Watch now how much experience we will get. We will eventually get level 4 Elme in no time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. For death and glory. Here in level 2. Elme is almost level 4. Almost. Come on now. Okay, one more trample into the second combo eventually, but we I don't want to take too much damage because heal is on cooldown. So let's give them heavy armor that makes them obviously much more tanky. Let's go for one more trample now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's kill the pike with the Rohirrim Arches. Avoid trampling them with the normal Rohirrim. And now, look at the choke point they are giving to us. That's going to give us so much experience now. Look this. Holy moly, Elma level 4. And not only that, but also almost glorious charge unlocked. That's going to be massive. The Rohirrim from the Rohan player, the Red Rohan player, can't approach us. They have no chance. And the reason is simple, because the color of Rohan is green and not red, my dude. We have so many power points collected. We could go if we wanted to for the Elven allies, but obviously we don't need that. We can snipe down this... Hold on a second. We can snipe down this Therion, right? Boom! Okay, we have Glorious Charge now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. For the death and glory. And Isengard and Rohan against Isengard and Rohan, the better mirror wins. And obviously, you know, uh, Rohan had to play a bit more offensively, I'm assuming. And this Isengard was kind of uh, spamming too many units and not going for upgrades fast enough. You want to actually go for upgrades all the time. Because upgrades in Battle for Middle of One have a huge impact, much greater impact than. I mean, he crippled us, but he cannot take us down. Much greater impact than in Battle for Middle of 2 and or in Rise of the Witch King, you know? And keep in mind that leadership is able to stack in Battle for Middle of 1. It means Warchan is able to stack with Tyrion. Tyrion is able to stack with Elma. Long story short, you can make your units extremely strong and make them eventually hit like an absolute track. The Orphan is going to fall today. I mean, can you ask? Can you hear Saruman asking? You know, Tyrion, can we not make peace? We shall make peace. But first, after taking the revenge. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the game. We are victorious unless the Rohan player decides to continue. But <clears throat> in this kind of situations, you cannot win against two. You know, that's not possible. That's not possible. That would just drag the game out extremely long and that's not needed. My ally left. We have so much money now. Holy moly, we can demolish the armory too. And buy even the third castle if he wants to keep fighting. Or we can just go for the end smooth. But he gives up. 
and we are victorious guys thank you so much for watching if this was enjoyable please don't forget to leave a like subscribe for more content like this in the future i will see you next time have a great holiday time with your family with your friends and see you soon again and as always guys keep hitting like a track and stay beyond standards peace out